So Homoptera is a suborder of Hemiptera, and I've listed orders under insects on canvas. And so there's a number of insects in here, aphids, psyllids, whiteflies, adelgids, scale insects, leafhoppers, mealybugs are in here. They all are plant pests. They may or may not have wings, and on the right here you have a winged aphid. And when they do have wings, their four wings held roof-like over the body. They're usually membranous. They all have piercing sucking mouth parts, and many of them excrete honeydew, not all of them. So leafhoppers all have wings, and they're actually some of the prettiest insects out there. That's what we have on the bottom left here. Aphids may or may not have wings, and they're very small. They typically have cornicles, and you can see from this drawing down below that you'll see they, they look like little tailpipes coming out the end. And you can see these uh, red aphids in the picture here. They have cornicles. Scale insects are wingless. Uh, they really don't move after they begin to feed. Their body is covered with a hard or waxy coating. Mealybugs are usually wingless. They're whitish or gray in color. They're covered with a waxy substance. They also move slowly. As I said, all homoptera feed on plants. And as I said, mouth parts are formed for piercing sucking. They come in many sizes. This is a scale insect. So some species in the order give birth to live young, aphids being one of them. And aphids will actually lay eggs too, but I did post a video so you can see what a live birth looks like. Metamorphosis is generally considered to be gradual or simple. So basically you have your eggs, you have your nymph, you have another stage of a nymph, and then you get to an adult. There may be a series of nymphs. There may be up to four nymphs before they become adults. but they don't really change in the way they look. They look pretty similar all the way through. So here's a rose leaf hopper, very common. Uh, they're not quite out yet, but keep your eyes open. They're about an eighth of an inch in length or less, and, and uh, they hop forward, backwards, and sideways, so they're really difficult to spray, even if you're trying to hose them off. They're, they laugh at you almost. Um, and they are a vector for diseases, so they're really an important problem. So they'll cause curling and whitening of leaves. Sometimes the tips of the leaves will turn brown uh, or die. And one of the things that they do spread is aster yellows, which is a phytoplasma. And some of the hosts include aster, calendula, gladiolus, dahlia, hollyhock, marigolds, rose, and zinnia. So here's aster yellows. We'll get to this later on in the quarter, but this is supposed to be a purple coneflower. It will not turn purple. It's going to cause this really strange growth and color. They overwinter as adults, nymphs, or eggs, and uh, there are two to three generations per year, and this is definitely some nasty leafhopper damage on a maple leaf. So biological control includes lady beetles, lacewings, damsel bugs, and spiders. And this is a picture of a damsel bug. It's a true bug. They are sub subject to p diseases and parasites, so that can keep their numbers down under most circumstances. But I can tell you that I've had leafhopper problems the last few years, and um, they are really challenging once you have them. So one of the controls you can have is to use a row cover early in the, in the early summer. You can use yellow sticky traps. Uh, and really yellow sticky traps aren't going to uh, kill a lot of them. They're just going to monitor. And then you want to keep your weeds down because that's a place they may be hanging out. Okay, so aphids. Um, three most common aphids in Washington, green apple aphid, rosy apple aphid, and woolly apple aphid. And this is rosy apple aphid on the right. So the green and the rosy apple primarily 
if it primarily feed on leaves, they like the succulent growth of tender shoots. And then the woolly apple aphid feeds on both the tree canopy and below ground on the roots. So this is what it looks like when it's attacking the roots. So the rosy apple aphid, the hosts include apple, pear, narrow leaf, plantain, dock. Um, so weeds are a source, an alternate host. And so the egg is going to be dark greenish to shiny black. And then the nymph and adult are pink to purplish, up to two millimeters long. And then they're coated with a very fine white powder or light coating. And some adults have wings. So here's some of the damage they uh, impart. You get tightly curled spur growth and honeydew. So the young shoots are twisted and deformed. And then you can see here's some uh, fruit damage. Um, and John Gold is especially sensitive to this. So they overwinter as eggs on two-year-old or older wood. They hatch when the buds open in the spring. You have several generations and then winged adults migrate to plantain for the summer. And then in the fall, they re return back to the apple where they lay overwintering eggs. So this is an aphid that actually does lay eggs. And here's a, the chart of their life cycle. So you want to control the ants because they do produce honeydew and the ants will protect them and from naturally occurring predators and some of the predators include lady beetles, lacewings, surfeit fly or hoverfly larvae, parasitic wasps. This is a lacewing larvae. Um, and of course you want to avoid using broad spectrum insecticides because you're going to kill these guys. Don't over fertilize. If you are going to use fertilizer, do a slow release uh, fertilizer or use something with low nitrogen. You can wash aphids from the tree and then of course managing your weeds, especially plantain. plantain. So mealybugs. This is primarily a greenhouse pest and also uh, in uh, interior scapes. So there's a lot of species of mealybugs. Um, what they can do is distort new growth. They cause leaf drop. They have honeydew secretions. They're very tiny. Um, they might have wink or white or pink bodies and they hang out in the crevices of plants. And so here's a list of some of their preferred hosts. And for the most part, those are all house plants but they do show up on New, Eng New Zealand flax. And if you know how that grows, there's lots of nooks and crannies for it to hang out. So cultural, just provide proper light and water. You can prune out if possible. You may remove the plants. Cryptolemus beetle is a great biological control and Bovaria bassiana, which is a fungal control. And if you are going to use chemicals, you want to spray 10 to 14 day intervals with a spreader sticker so it stays on. If you're using anything like an insecticidal soap or neem, you, may, you have to make sure you actually get the insect. You may not be able to kill it otherwise. So cryptolema is also called a mealybug destroy, destroyer, usually released as adults on mealybug infestations. And then the eggs hatch and uh, all stages feed on mealybugs and so they're like little lady beetles and if you're familiar with lady beetle larvae you can see the bottom picture here that's basically a hairy version of lady beetle larvae I use these on an interior scape regularly we had birds of paradise that had really bad infestations of mealybugs so we would release them and actually the customer never complained until they saw the larvae because they thought that was the pest but uh, it's a great way to manage if you can do it. So if you do release these, you want to do it in the morning or the evening. You want to avoid wearing white because they like to go, um, they're attracted to the light color. You have to manage ants because they'll fight them off. And you apply five insects per square yard or two to five per infested plant. And the optimum temperature for doing this would be 71 to 77 degrees. So this is going to be something you do in a greenhouse or in an interior scape situation. 
Okay, so whitefly is another lovely pest, mostly really only greenhouse. Um, you don't really see it outside around here. Warmer temperatures or warmer climates may have that. They do produce honeydew. They produce yellowing, cupping, distorted growth. The nymphs are yellow with red eyes. They attach to leaf surfaces and the adults are gonna be on the undersides of leaves. So their preferred hosts are Gerber daisies, and you know how I feel about poinsettias, but here we go, poinsettias and chrysanthemum. And this is a really bad problem if you're uh, growing flowers for interior scapes or to sell at flora, uh, florist shops. Um, you can't have these things. So if you see these things, you want to remove the plant or plant parts. You can use yellow sticky cards, at least one per thousand square feet. And this is really more to monitor, um, although they will kind of dissolve once they stick to the card, which is kind of cool. Um, there's a, a wasp, Ovaria bassiana, and then there's another beetle, which is, this is a picture of it. And if you're going to do chemical sprays, you want to do it seven to 10 in day intervals. Okay, so here is the beetle, very effective against greenhouse and sweet potato whitefly, which are the two most common whiteflies you're going to find in a greenhouse situation. Um, both the larval and adults feed on all stages of it, and then if they run out of whitefly, they'll eat spider mites when there's no whitefly, so that's kind of cool. And you, they're shipped as adults, and they consume several hundred whitefly eggs and nymphs daily, so... It's definitely worth the investment if you decide you want to do this. It's uh, better than breaking out the pesticides. Okay, scales. There's a lot of different types of scales, and uh, some of you may see these out here. You've got soft scales, which are soft. One example would be soft brown scale, which you find on camellias. Armored scales would be oyster shell scale, which is in the bottom picture here. They literally look like oyster shell um, shells. Piercing sucking mouth parts again. Um, only the soft scales secrete honeydew, the armored scales don't. So on the left here, we've got a soft scale, this cottony maple scale. Um, they, they protect themselves with waxy secretions. Armored scale is this one's San Jose scale. This also secretes a protective cover over its body. So damage includes dieback, stunting, leaf drop, discolored leaves. Uh, the adult scales don't move. The eggs are located under the body. So in minor infestations, you can either wipe them from the bark or leaves. You can prune them out. And then there's natural predators such as lady beetles and green lacewings. And these are eggs of lady beetles. And if you are going to use insecticide, you want to get them at the crawler stage. That's usually in late spring to early summer, because that's really the most vulnerable uh, portion of their life cycle. And then if you do use oils, oils can suffocate them. You need to do it in the delayed dormant period, and you use um, superior type oil on overwintering nymphs. <laughs> 